Welcome back guys, we have just talked about the dystrophin proteins and uh, the relation of dystrophin with muscular dystrophy. If you haven't watched the video, just go back and watch the video, it will be helpful. And in this video, we will be also talking about another muscular protein that is called as fibronectin. So let's talk about fibronectin. Fibronectin. Now the fibronectin is again a type of muscular protein or muscle protein that's fine and it is also a kind of fibrous, it's a fibrous type of proteins. This is a fibrous nature protein. Fibrous proteins are usually non-soluble in water but we are going to know that there are two varieties of fibronectin protein. One is a typical fibrous type of proteins which are non-soluble in water but another one which is kind of soluble in water and that's called the blood fibronectin or plasma fibronectin protein. Okay, so let's talk about it. So fibronectin is again fibrous protein. It is made up with you know uh, long uh, alpha helix structures and all this. So fibronectin is another important protein during muscle <coughs> to help uh, supporting the muscle strength and muscle stress. So if you look at here, it is also integral part of the extracellular matrix and intercellular uh, connect, connective proteins. For example, if you look at here, this is a cell. If you don't uh, understand this uh, picture, you can go back to my other video about dystrophin and where I talked about this, I've drawn this picture there. Now I'm explaining that again, that this is a cell membrane of our muscle cell. For example, inside the cell membrane, we have a protein embedded called integrin, which is a heart of the protein which is connected the intracellular matrix and the extracellular matrix. For example, inside our cells we have cytoskeletons like actin filaments, microfibrils and all these things. So those actin filaments that are present inside our cell, inside the cytoskeleton, inside the cytoplasm, is they need to be connected with the extracellular matrix proteins to have a proper rigidity to all those cells to maintain the shape of all those cells. So if you look at here, this is the actin filament, this is the actin uh, polymer all the way. Those actin polymers are maintaining the cell from internal shape. Outside we have extracellular matrix proteins like, like you know fibrin, heparin sulfate, collagen, they are present outside. So collagen, fibrin or, or some other. So let's say, let's say it's a heparin sulfate or collagen for example all fibrin for example all these proteins are present outside so we need to connect with both extracellular matrix proteins as well as intracellular matrix proteins and the only way to do that is to have an intermediate protein channel and that intermediate protein is played by the integrin it is embedded into the cell membrane now it needs to connect with the actin as well as with the collagen or fibrin now during that process as the integrin is embedded they cannot move or cannot hold on to other proteins so they need different linker proteins which will link integrin with uh, the cytoskeleton proteins as well as with the extracellular matrix proteins for example here for that reason dystrophin plays a vital role for interacting actin filaments with integrin the same way we require fibronectin and fibronectin acts as a protein which will interact and connect integrin with the extracellular matrix proteins like fibrin, like collagen. Okay, so that are the function of fibronectin spatially. It is interacting with integrin to hold on to the fibrin or collagen which is present in the extracellular matrix, right? So why it is important? It is very much important for the cell to understand what is going on outside. For example, a cell is present, let's say a lot of cells, a cell is present there and other cells are also surrounding it. You know, an uh, important term called contact inhibition. That's a rule when natural or normal cells uh, sense that whether the other cells or surrounding that cells are kind of filled or not. For example, let's say we are, talk we are talking about this particular cell here, red one. Now that cell is our interest. Now that cell is sensing that outside all the cells are kind of start to, uh, they, are, they are kind of filling the region and there are no further room for the cell to grow and divide. So the cell division and growth will be halted, will be stopped then and then. And that is due to a kind of cell signaling process that is going on inside, even more than one cell signaling process that is going on to achieve that task. But the thing is, let's say after a certain time, uh, due to any kind of uh, mechanical injury, there are cells that are damaged outside. Let's say the cells are damaged. Some cells are damaged outside. Some are uh, also there, but most of the cells are damaged. Now again, the cell is sensing that outside uh, that surrounding, there are no cells to leave. There, there are dead cells which are getting dis, di, di, I mean, 
degraded and debris are released so in this cases this cell will sense that once the cell sells this particular situation inside outside that cell needs to start growing and dividing again to fill that wound that's how the wounds are getting healed because if that cell is not getting the signal anyway then the wound will remain as it is and infection will start to occur so that is very very important for wound healing as well as for cell growth and cell division so that sensing is important and this, there is only way to sense it because we need to go outside because you cannot know who are present outside your home until and unless you come out of the door right so that's a simple task for the cells too they want to know who is present there outside that room and the only way to check is by looking outside and the looking outside means here cross talking with extracellular matrix and that thing can only be achieved by the interlinking molecules like fibronectin so that's why fibronectin e is very very important now fibronectin fibrous molecules what is the structure and all these things i don't want to talk about they're kind of boring won't interest you but the thing is this is interesting it is a huge part in the wound healing process as well it plays a huge part in the cell cycle cell division cell growth cell anchorage and also cell propagation so all these things kind of sense things that cell growth cell division cell propagation cell migration related with cancer so that's why fibronectin is again another hot pick for our research because it, the change in fibronectin or the problems difficulties mutations with fibronectin may lead to cancer so if you look at here that the fibronectin I've told you of two different types now because the one type is soluble and another type is non-soluble. So, so, so soluble and non-soluble another one. The soluble one is called the plasma that's called the plasma fibronectin and the non-soluble one is the muscular fibronectin or muscle fibronectin that's called as the muscle fibronectin that's that's what we're talking about but the soluble one acts as the plasma fibronectin now why we require plasma fibronectin remember fibronectin is interacting with fibrin that is present here in extracellular matrix so fibronectin plays vital role in blood clotting also so that's why non -sol that's why soluble fibronectin is also important for the plasma factor for the blood clotting now uh, the thing is uh, in the non soluble form that is the muscle fibronectin that that is you know fibrous in nature that is non soluble in water and the thing is uh, that uh, this sorry it's not sol soluble so it should be b somewhere there okay so uh, so that's that's kind of it about the fibronectin and, and how fibronectin actually works however this uh, no this soluble form of fibronectin which is not very much inside the cell is produced by liver cells or hepatocytes on the other hand the non soluble form of fibronectin or the fibrous fibronectin is produced by the fibroblast cells majorly so that's another thing that i should tell you is produced by fibroblast cells and this is produced by liver cells or hepatocyte cells okay so that in a sense is a fibronectin and the importance of fibronectin in our human body or or in any animal body that's very very important and uh, if you like the video please don't forget to subscribe like the video put some comments i'll try to answer your questions hopefully and uh, if you want to watch all the all the other protein videos are there in online so you can watch all those videos about 20 or 30 proteins that are very much important for human body so watch all those videos and thank you